Welcome back to The Girl Who Speaks Bear, uh, written by Sophie Anderson, uh, illustrated by Catherine Hennister, and read with permission from Osborne Publishers. Chapter 22 Sasha's Ghost. I stare at the wispy, translucent figure in disbelief. A ghost, a real ghost. One that looks exactly like Sasha. Sasha's ghost. The world crumbles around me. Sasha can't be dead. He's my best friend. Every day we walk together, talk together, climb together, race together. We live our lives together. He can't be gone. I look down at Sasha's body lying limp in my arms as my heart clenches so tight and I gasp in pain. That's my body! Sasha's ghost exclaims. His eyes widen in shock and I see through them into the house beyond. Valentina steps over closer to me and pulls, puts a hand on Sasha's real frozen cheek. Mm, you're freshly dead. Maybe it's not too late. She holds out her arms to take Sasha's body. Quick, pass him to me. Can you save him? I lower Sasha's body into Valentina's arms and my paws tremble as I wait for her response. I can't understand you when you're a bear, Yanka. Valentina glances up at me. But if you're asking about this boy, I'll do everything I can. She turns on her heel and disappears into the house with Sasha's body, leaving me lost in a tangle of hope and fear. Sasha's ghost stays on the porch, looking as scared and confused as I feel. She called you Yanka? He floats towards me and peers into my eyes. Is it really you? I lower myself onto all fours and nod. Sasha shakes his head in disbelief. What happened to you? Even if I could speak, I wouldn't know where to begin. I stare down at my long, dark claws and shrug. Why didn't you tell me what was going on? Sasha's eyes fill with hurt. We've always told each other everything. I'd have only wanted to help. I wish I could apologise. I've been so foolish. When Sasha saw my legs, I should have explained. I should have told him how I felt. But I ran away and left him at the silver, r- silver stream. And now, I look up at Sasha, at his ghost. He's dead or dying, and it's all my fault. A groan rolls from my mouth. I can't believe you're a bear. Sasha Sasha reaches out to touch my face, but his fingers pass right through me. The sensation sends hot sparks along my snout and I sneeze. Sasha pulls his hand back and stares at it in confusion. And I can't believe I'm... This is so weird. He laughs, but there are tears in his eyes. I shift from one great paw to the other, not knowing what to do to make this right. Hey, Yanka. Sasha nudges my shoulder, sending another flurry of sparks through me. Whatever else we are, we're still best friends, right? I look it up at him, blink away my own tears and nod. Sasha. The door swings open and Elena steps out. My mother wants you inside, with your body. She sweeps Sasha's ghost indoors as if he's made of nothing but smoke. Wait! I call after him, but I don't know what my words sound like to him. But he stops and turns around. I'm sorry. I stare into his misty see-through eyes and will him to understand. I'm so sorry for everything. Please don't die. I'll see you soon, Yanka. Sasha smiles. Don't run off, trying to get a head start on our next race. He disappears into the house with Elena and I stare after them, worries av- avalanching onto my shoulders. Mousetrap leaps from the roof and lands on my neck. He scampers up to my ear and curls around it. I'm sure the human boy will be fine. The house tells me the Yaga woman is both ancient and wise. The porch steps stretch towards me and the balustrades open like welcoming arms. If you listened, Mousetrap nips my ear, you would hear the house inviting you to sit on its porch. I look up at the house and the roof curves into a smile. Sit next to me, Yuri calls and shuffles along to make room. You can share my blanket. He nudges a green woolen blanket out from beneath his legs and spreads it out with his snout. I step as gently as I can onto the porch and edge my way around to Yuri. The balustrades swell and curve to allow me to pass. How are your wounds? I ask, peering at Yuri's back. The worst one has been dressed with aloe leaves and smells a little bit of Mamochka's beeswax and sandalwood balsam. It's not the same, but just the hint of home makes my eyes sting. Suddenly aware of my own wounds from the wolf pack, I turn around and start licking the ones I can reach without thinking. 
Mm, I'm much better, thank you. The Yaga woman and her daughters are good he healers. Yuri looks up at me and sniffs loudly. I was upset by you leaving, though. You told me you'd be my herd, and then you left. It was rude of you to leave without explanation, Mousetrap agrees. I was frantic when I woke to find you gone. I'm sorry. I apologise to Yuri, then try to look up at Mousetrap, but he's out of sight at the very top of my head. I'm so sorry, Mousetrap. I should have taken you with me. Yes, you should have. Mousetrap leans over my snout and I breathe in his familiar smell of dust and earthy musk. I've made the same mistake so many times. I left you, and Mamochka, and Sasha. A lump grows in my throat. And now, Sasha, because of me, he's... Enough. Mousetrap stomps onto my snout. He's so close that my eyes cross when I look at him. The human boy will be fine. Listen. He lifts a paw to his lips and his ears perk up. I lift my own ears and hold my breath, but hear nothing. What is it? I whisper. Mousetrap shakes his head in disappointment. I thought you'd learn to listen. I frown and swivel my ears all around. I hear Yuri's calm breathing. Blackiston's grooming his feathers on the roof above us. The creak of floorboards inside the house. The gurgle of the stream alongside it. I hear the treetops whisper and a squirrel scoot up rough bark. I smell Ivan somewhere in a shadowy thicket. And I hear one of his paws brush the earth. But that's it. Nothing else. What? I ask again. What can you hear? The house! Mousetrap trills. The house is trying to talk to you. I look up at the eaves. I'm sorry, I can't hear you at all. The house wants to tell you a story. Mousetrap climbs back onto my head and curls around my ear. I'll relay it for you if you like. Please. I nod. It's a true story. Mousetrap nestles deep into my fur of how the house and the Yaga woman saved a life once. They did? Hope flickers into my chest that the house and Valentina will save Sasha too. Yes! Mousetrap nips my ear. Now mind your manners and listen. I like that dog. <laughs> the Yaga house and the fisherman's soul. Once upon a time, a fisherman died. His soul drifted through the forest, drawn to the skull light surrounding a Yaga's house. The door of the house opened, and inside was a warm fire and a cloud of cold, dead souls. You're dead, said the Yaga of the house with a smile. You have come here to remember and celebrate your life before you move on to the stars from whence you came. The Yaga passed the fisherman a glass of rich, dark kvass and a bowl of thick, spicy soup. More dead arrived, and they all ate and drank by the fire until their souls were warm and full. The Yaga house buzzed and sparked with stories being shared. The fisherman remembered his childhood with an aching heart, but when he spoke of his time at sea, his eyes lit up, and all the souls in the house stopped to listen. The fisherman conjured wide, open skies and deep, dark waters that changed with each kiss of the wind. He drew mountainous waves and shivering ripples, and sea foam as frothy as snow. Monsters and mysteries danced in his words, and adventures tripped off his tongue. The Yaga house was entranced. Unable to contain its excitement, it rose onto its great chicken feet and galloped through the forest, determined to find its own adventures at sea. Stop! shouted the Yaga, and she banged on the rafters. We need to guide the dead! Stop! shouted the dead, as they swirled in confusion. We need to move on to the stars! But the fishermen kept telling stories of enchanted waves and shining treasures and creatures that glowed in the dark. And so the house ran on, all the way to the northern sea. It splashed into the surf and waded deeper and deeper until water seeped through its floorboards and walls. Stop! yelled the Yaga. We don't know how to swim! Stop! screamed the dead. We'll all be lost in the waves, like the souls of the haunting Rosalki. But the fishermen kept telling stories of sunken cities and forgotten islands and fish that leaped to the stars. And the house paddled on through the water, faster and faster, until it was swimming far out to the sea. It grew a leaf sail that billowed and bowed and swept the house towards the horizon. The Yaga sighed, because the house would not listen, and she sat to think up a plan. 
she looked at the fisherman and realised his stories were so full of life that he must be freshly dead, perhaps so fresh that he might be saved. House! she boomed. This fisherman is not ready to go to the stars. Quick, paddle back to the shore. We must find his body and reunite it with his soul. The house sank a little in disappointment, but it turned and swam back to the shore. After all, who would not save a life if they could? The house sloshed from the water and shook its feet dry. Then it raced through the forest until it found the body of the fisherman, broken and burned beneath the fire dragon's cavern. The Yaga grabbed the fisherman's soul and ran to his body. Get back in, she ordered, with such fierceness that the fisherman dared not refuse. He lay down in his body and breath surged into his lungs. Pain shot through the fisherman's limbs and darted over his skin, but the Yaga dressed his wounds, gave him herbs for the pain, and left him with food and water to recover. Then she returned to the Yaga house to guide the rest of the dead in peace. The Yaga house smiled at the fisherman, pleased it had saved his life and walked calmly back into the forest. But it glanced at the ocean once more before the waves disappeared behind the trees, and promised one day that it would have its own adventures at sea.